Good morning, New Beginning Church and our online family and friends. Today and every day is a good day to give God the glory for the great things he has done. Our scripture today comes from Ephesians 5, 3 through 10. And it reads, all praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ. Even before he made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. This is not, this is what he wanted to do and it gave him great pleasure. So we praise God for the glorious grace he has poured out on us who belong to his dear son. He is so rich in kindness and grace and he purchased our freedom with the blood of his son and forgave our sins. He has showered his kindness on us along with all wisdom and understanding. God has now revealed to us his mysterious plan regarding Christ, a plan to fulfill his own good pleasure. Verse 10 says, and this is the plan that at the right time, he will bring everything together under the authority of Christ. Everything in heaven and on earth. Aren't you glad that God chose you? Yes, I am so glad that God chose me. And the scripture says that before God made the world, he chose us and he loved us. He chose us in advance. He purchased our freedom with the blood of his son, Jesus Christ. And that is good news. Our song this morning is, I know it was the blood. One day when I was lost, he died upon the cross. I know it was the blood for me. I know it was the blood. It was the blood 
for me. Guess what? He's coming. He's coming back again. He's coming back again. He's coming back again for me. Yes. One day when I was lost, he died upon the cross. And I know it was the blood for me. I know it was the blood. It was my Savior's blood. For me, he did it for me. He died. And I know it was the blood for me. It was my Savior's blood. Let's go to God in prayer. Father God, we thank you now. We bless your name. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. We thank you for another privilege, another chance, another opportunity to come before you. We thank you, Father God, for blessing us to come in your presence one more again, to honor you, to honor your word, to be blessed by your word. We pray, Father God, that you bless us now. Forgive us for our sins, for we have fallen short. Bless us, Father God, that we will be holy as you are holy. Set us apart, Father God, for your worship. Bless us as we come now and go before you, Father God. We ask you to bless your word, that your word will fall on good soil, that old habits will be rolled away, old burdens will be thrown away, that life will roll on just a little while longer, that we will tell men, women, boys, and girls that Jesus is real and he is blessing us today. We ask you, Father God, to bless me, humble me, keep me, hide me behind the cross that Jesus Christ will preach and teach your word, that old habits will be thrown away, that life will be changed and made the difference. And Lord, we ask you to keep the glory, all the honor and all the praise, allow us to be beneficiaries of your many blessings. It's in the strong, mighty, powerful, anointed name of Jesus Christ we pray, and we ask it all. Amen, and thank God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb. It was Jesus' blood. That, that has cleansed us and washed us. It is the blood of Jesus. And we thank God for Jesus who has blessed us again to come in his presence. Let me call your attention to Philippians chapter 2. In the New Testament, the book is Philippians chapter 2. The verses are 9 through 11. Philippians chapter 2, verses 9 through 11. This has been a tough week. <laughs> Last week was a tough week. But we have somebody we can call on, and his name is Jesus. Philippians chapter 2, verses 9 through 11 is where we are today. When you found it, you will discover these words. Therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth and that every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. My point, my point will be taken, my, my emphasis today will be taken from verse number 11 where it says and that every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. I want to talk about say his name. Say his name. During these civil rights movements that we have even in the 21st century, that never really went away from the 20th century. Oftentimes in marching and protesting, the leader will remind the people to say his name or her name. The reason why, the reason why the leader wants you to say his name or her name is because the leader of the civil rights movement, regardless of who he is or who she is, 
does not want you to forget the awful price that was paid by these victims. The leader, the leader of the civil rights movement, and we have several leaders in 2020, Black Lives Matter, uh, those leaders, they want you to remember those people who have died unjustly at the hand of mean men and mean women. They remind you during every march that you have to say their names because there is power in saying the name. It's as if when we go to prayer, go before God in prayer, we have to say a particular name. Therefore, we must find ourselves repeating over and over again, every time someone is unjustly killed, we have to repeat their names. Emmett Till, the leader would say, say his name, because they don't want you to forget how he was victimized and killed. Eric Garner, they don't want you to forget how with one single choke hole and several officers throwing him to the ground and holding him in a choke hole until he breathed his last and said, I can't breathe, I can't breathe. So they will tell you over and over again, say his name. Tamir Rice, say his name, say Say the name, say the name over and over again because these are the ones who've been unjustly killed. Trayvon Martin, say, say, his, say his name because they want you to be reminded that he was victimized and killed unjustly. Ahmaud Arbery, say his name. They are telling you over and over again to say his name because they want you to remember the moment where two, one, a former officer would dare kill him in the street because he was jogging down the street. They just took his life. They want you to remember to say his name. Breonna Taylor, one that was, was taken away by police fire in her own house, not even doing anything wrong. They, they want you to continue to say, say their name because it is their name, it is their name that keep us focused on the rights of human beings and the rights of so many that were snuffed away in second. And finally, today we are repeating the name of George Floyd, the one who was choked to death by a knee of an officer, someone who has known him, and because of jealousy and because of the evil way men will treat you because of your color, we are being reminded, even in the 21st century, even in 2020, that we need to say his name, and they are saying his name to remind us that we cannot forget the cause. We cannot forget what he has gone through. And we cannot forget that we must keep marching and, and keep focused and keep fighting for the rights of all mankind. Mm -hmm. Such it is in the text today. We find the Apostle Paul locked in a Roman jail telling us that we need to say his name. Paul, the Apostle Paul, locked up in the midst of prison, stopped long enough just to remind us that there is a name above every name. Yes. And we need to call on his name. The Apostle Paul says to us, and he begins this pericope by letting us know that Jesus is the one whose name we ought to be saying. He starts off in verse number five by saying that Christ Jesus humbled himself. He, he did not count it robbery to be equal to God. He says to us that we need to know that this mind that is in Christ Jesus ought to be in us also. 
He says, let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. In other words, you ought to be humble. You ought to have an humble mind. You ought to be one that is humble, so much so that Jesus has humbled himself. He paints the picture that Jesus has left his heavenly throne in heaven. He has left the place of glory to come down to a mean world to save us. Let me tell you, you ought to say his name. <laughs> you ought to say his name Jesus when you're in trouble. Jesus when things are going well because he humbled himself came down through 42 generations. He, he got off in a place called Bethlehem of Judea. He took on the form of God. He did not find it robbery. He did not find something to boast about because he was and he is God. He made himself no reputation, taking on a form, the form of a bond servant, taking on the form of someone who served other human beings. Let me tell you, if you're going to be somebody that God is going to be proud of, you need to take on the form of a servant. The greatest one, the greatest one is a servant. The greatest one is a servant. And you ought to always take on the form of a servant. Take on the form of a servant. You have to take on the form of a servant because the fact of the matter is the greatest is the servant. So Jesus took on the form of a bond servant, a locked up servant, but he voluntarily took on this form of a servant. And he was, he, Jesus Christ, came in the likeness of a man. He came in the likeness of men. Jesus, God himself, Jesus Stepped down from heaven. Jesus himself left his throne in glory. Jesus himself came down to be a part of us. He robed himself up as a baby. Robed himself up as a man. Jesus did it and he did it for you and for me. Found himself in the form of man and being found in the appearance of man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death. When we look at these names that I have called here today who have died, many would say that they, they died because they humbled themselves. Police officers would say that they did not humble themselves. And one of the famous phrases, one of the best phrases that police officers will do, will say is uh, stop. Stop resisting, stop resisting, stop resisting. What they are saying is stop fighting back. Humble yourself under me. And that's why good police officers look bad because there are so many who are bad and right. Mm -hmm. Being made and appeared in the form of a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Even the death of the cross. The reason why Paul points out here that it's even the death of the cross is because he understands really well that the cross was a crucial part of life for those who were guilty as charged. The Roman, no Roman citizen was put on the cross. No one Roman citizen was crucified on the cross simply because the cross was such an agonizing and anguishing situation. The cross, the cross of uh, that men were crucified on, they would hang you up and, and blood would fill up in your lungs and you would suffocate to death just like George Floyd did on the side of the road. Jesus died on that cross. Yes, he, he died a voluntary death on the cross. You see, before Jesus died on the cross, the cross represented shame. The cross represented embarrassment. But now that Jesus has died on the cross, the cross represents the victory of all of us yes. who have a hope in God and a hope in Jesus Christ. Yes. Thank God for the cross. Oftentimes, I used to wonder, as a little boy, I used to wonder, what wasn't so good about Friday? The Friday that Jesus died, why is it called Good Friday? I understand a little better now 
Jesus was killed on Good Friday. Jesus was hung on Good Friday. Jesus was beat up and led to a skull hill called Calvary on Good Friday. It looked bad for him, but it was good for us. Thank God that Jesus didn't come off the cross on Good Friday. It was a Good Friday. It was a Good Friday because Jesus gave in to the cross. He stayed on the cross. Many offered him to come down from the cross. He could have called forth uh, 2,000, 10,000 angels. He could have called them to unshackle him, unbuckle him from the cross. But he stayed on that cross for you and for me. Paul says he humbled himself even to the depths of the cross. Therefore God, God, because he was humble, because he humbled himself, be, because he gave in to the cross, be, because he humbled himself to the point that he did not come down, because he stayed on the cross, the next verse, verse says, the next verse says, therefore God has highly exalted him, verse number nine. God has highly exalted him and given him a name above every name. Yeah, he, he's given a name above every name. You see, we name our children these days some crazy names. When we look at, when we look at Jabez, his, his mama named him Jabez, which meant pain. Why would somebody name their child pain? She named Jabez pain because he brought pain to her, because he brought pain to the world. But let me just share with you, just like Jabez, if you humble yourself before God, just like Jabez, if you come before the Lord in prayer, just like Jabez, even if you got a messed up name. God can make things right for you. Even if you have a messed up name, God can do great things for you. There is something in a name. Amen. When I look at Alexander in the Bible, I'm reminded that Paul says to Alexander, you got a bad name. He says to Alexander, the carpet smith, he says that God is going to deal with you. He says to Alexander the carpet smith, he says to him that you have caused me great harm in ministry. Alexander is a bad name, but I thank God today that God has given me the name Alexander because he has made a bad name good. Yeah. God, God works well with bad stuff. God works well with stuff that does not go so well on planet Earth. God specializes in changing things. He specializes in the impossible. God specializes in doing things well. God has given Jesus a name above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. The psalmist that the psalmist talked about the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof and they that dwell therein. Paul says here that every knee shall bow. Every knee shall bow of those in heaven. They shall bow. Folk in heaven bind to the name of Jesus. I'm looking forward to the day that I meet my Lord on the other side. I'm looking forward to the day that they can crown him Lord of all. I'm looking forward to the day that every knee will bow. It says to us today that, that even if, even if, even if we, even if we get to a point in our lives where we are thinking we are big shots, where we think we have it going on, one of these days you're going to have to bow to the name of Jesus. You can choose to bow now and you can be forced to bow later. You're going to have to bow to the name of Jesus. I just want to tell you, you need to say his name. <laughs> Because it's that name you're going to have to bow to. You need to say his name. You need to be willing to say his name. You need to call on him because one of these days you're going to have to bow to the name of Jesus. He says not only shall, shall those in heaven bow to that name, those on earth will bow to that name. You see, men are running around today acting like they really got it going on. They're acting like as if they really, really, really are big shots. 
There are men on planet Earth today who act like they got things working so well with them that they're going to always be without suffering. But let me just share with you the man who is who is looking out the window today and he sees this big yellow stripe down the middle of the avenue that says Black Lives Matter. That man will have to bow to the name of Jesus one day. The one who, who every time he moved in a certain area of the White House, he's going to have to look out and he's going to see the big street covered with big wide leather that says black lives matter. When he turns on that street, he's going to see black lives matter. That man, one of these days, will have to bow to the name of Jesus. Then Paul says, Paul says, that those under the earth, in verse number 10, he says, Philippians chapter 2, verse number 10, he says, those under the earth will have to bow to the name Jesus. You see, when you bow, when, when you bow, that means it is something that you do in honoring a great person. And let me tell you, if former President Barack Obama was to walk in the room, many people would stand up. But if Jesus walks in the room, everybody would have to buy down. Because you honor other men, but you worship your God. And Jesus Christ is our God. Yeah, you need to say his name. And my, my final verse here is verse number 11. And I say to you, you need to say his name. You need to say his name because verse number 11, Philippians chapter 2 declares to us today, and that every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. You need to say his name. You need to practice saying his name. You, you need to walk in your daily moving around saying his name. When pains hit you, you need to say his name. When life has afforded you a good deal, you need to say his name. When life has given you a short end of the stick, you need to say his name because there's power in the name of Jesus. There's strength in the name of Jesus. Let me tell you, when we pray, we ought to pray in the name of Jesus. We ought to call on him in the name of Jesus. We ought to make sure that when we call on the name of God, we ought to call on the name of Jesus. Let me just share with you, oftentimes, oftentimes we had children over to the house that came over to the house with our daughter, and, and they wanted to get something out of the refrigerator. Let me share with you, they didn't come to me, didn't come to Sister Davis and ask us for what they wanted. They went through Megan, and they asked Megan, do you think your mom and your daddy would have mind if we got this out of the refrigerator? Because you had a person that you had to go through in order to get the person, get to the person who owns what's in the place. Let me just share with you, when we come to God, we got to go through his son Jesus in order to get to him. We ought to say his name on a regular basis. We ought to live through his name. Amen. Because it is Jesus' name that gets us to God. Yes. When we pray, we ought to call on his name. I see sometimes at major functions... I see when people pray and they, they ask certain people to pray over the function. They won't call his name. They'll say stuff like, in your name, Lord. They'll say stuff like, in your son's name, Lord. What well, I'm telling you today, that there's power in pronouncing the name of Jesus. Amen. I'm reminded of a Fellowship of Christian Athletes banquet. When one of the football stars of the Houston Oilers stood up, and he was the MC for the day. And throughout that night, he was calling on the name of Jesus. He was pushing the name of Jesus. He was expressing the name of Jesus. He was talking about the name of Jesus. Every time he stood up after one person who presented, he would talk about the name of Jesus. Remember now, it's the fellowship of Christian athletes. It's the fellowship of Christian athletes banquet. So when the guy stood up, the MC, he would mention the name of Jesus every time he got a chance. All that, that Monday morning, the office of the Fellowship of Christian Athletes got, got a call. They said that, that your MC talked about Jesus too much. 
It was like he was constantly giving us over and over and over and over again, rubbing Jesus' name in our face. And because we are Jews, we don't want to hear Jesus' name over and over again. And I was on that advisory council, so when they came to me and they asked me, how shall we answer them? I said very clearly to them, when they showed up at the banquet, they knew it was the Fellowship of Christian Athletes Banquet. They knew that Christ was the one that we worship. And they say that they're going to pull their money out because... This guy stood up and he called on Jesus' name over and over and over again. I said to them, I don't know what you're going to do, Mike, but one thing I would do is let them pull their money out because we cannot stop calling on the name of Jesus. We got to lift his name. We got to glorify his name. One thing that we need to remember as we protest, one thing we need to remember as we march, one thing we must remember as we follow the laws that are set before us, we need to remember the name of Jesus. We need to know that we're going to pray to the name of Jesus. We need to know that we're going to stand for the name of Jesus. We can't let money, we can't let stuff turn us around. Yeah. I remember the voice of the late Dr. Martin Luther King said that nothing can turn us around now. Not any fire hoses, not any dogs, not any police force can turn us around now. We ought to have that same resolve when it comes to the name of Jesus. You need to say his name. If you got a gun pointed at you, you better call on the name of Jesus. If you got somebody taking you to the ground, call on the name of Jesus. If you got somebody arguing with you, call on the name of Jesus. There is power in the name. The text declares that God has highly exalted Jesus, and he has given Jesus a name above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee must bow. Every knee in heaven must bow. Every knee on earth must bow and every knee under the earth must bow because there's power in the name of Jesus. Yes. And he says every tongue, every tongue must confess that Jesus is Lord. Let me tell you today, my dears, if, if you are a Christian, don't get down on yourself. If you are a Christ, and don't, don't let people think you're more than hu less than human. If you are a Christ, and don't let people make you think that you will have low self-esteem because you are under the greatest name above all name. His name is Jesus. Yes. Say his name, 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 say the name of Jesus, and say his name, say his name, say his name, say his name. His name is Jesus. We have to practice saying his name. We have to make sure we continue to say his name. Say his name just as we call on these names. Emmett Tia, uh, just as we call on Eric Garner's name, just as we call on Tamir Rice's name, as we call on Bri Brianna Taylor's name, Trayvon Martin's name, uh, call on George Floyd's name. Let me just serve you notice, their name don't have the power that Jesus' name has. We can call on their name to memorialize them. We can call on their name to remember them. We can call on their name to be encouraged in the fight for them and for justice. But when it comes to power, when it comes to hope, when it comes to strength, we got to call on the name of Jesus. You need to say his name. Jesus, thank you, Lord, for who you are. Jesus, thank you for what you have done. Thank you, Lord, for being who you are. Thank you for being what you are. Thank you for being a heavy load carer. Thank you for being a bridge over troubled water. Call on his name. His name is Jesus. He gives us hope. He gives us strength. He gives us joy. Call on that name. His name is Jesus. Amen. Why do you want us to call on that name, preacher? Because the text says God has given him a name. The God in heaven, Theos God, the, the self-existing God, the, the most powerful God that will ever be known to any a mankind. Call on that name. That God has given Jesus a name. He's our passport to our God. He, he's our strength 
in ages past. He, he's been our helper in our, in our battle lack. He has been there for us when civil rights weren't there for us. When the government wasn't there for us. When things was going wrong for us, Jesus was there for us. That's why in the civil rights movements of the 50s and the 60s, it was led by Reverend Martin Luther King, Reverend Matt, Ralph Abernathy, Reverend Jesse Jackson. It's because we know if we're going to make it in this world in which we live, we need to make sure we call on the name of Jesus because God is going to help us. Hang on in there. Don't forget about God. Stay the course. God is yet in control. Hold on. God is in control. When you can't call on mama, when you can't call on daddy, you need to say his name. His name is Jesus. Yeah. Another reason why we say his name, other than the fact that God has highly exalted him, we ought to say his name because the text declares that there will come a day that everybody will say his name. Don't wait till everybody has to say his name. You need to say his name right now. You need to call right now. Don't wait till you get to heaven when you join in the four, with the four beasts and the creatures. You need to call on his name now. Amen. Don't wait till you get to heaven when the 24 elders are surrounding. When you see the 24 elders surrounding the throne of grace to call on his name, you need to be calling on his name now. There's power in his name. The other reason why we ought to call on his name is because he got a good track record. He has a good track record. He has a good track record because when, when, I, when I look at look over the shoulders of my life and I see how far Jesus has brought me, I understand that he has a good track record. He has never let me down. I didn't say he never done anything that I didn't like. I, I didn't say that he always did everything that I asked him to do. But what I am saying, he made the best of me out of the worst of me. He has delivered me from myself. And some of you here today need to be delivered from yourself. You need to be delivered from yourself because you are messing up stuff for yourself. You need to call on Jesus. He's our helper. The text is clear that he is the one who humbled himself, even to death, even to the death of the cross. You know Jesus, don't you? You remember when he humbled himself to the death of the cross? We weren't physically here, but while we were yet in sin, God died for us. Jesus died on a skull hill called Calvary. Yeah, we all have sinned. We've all fallen short. We've all messed up. But Jesus himself, he gave us a right to the tree of life. He did it over 2,000 years ago. He took a tree, I tell you. He marched up Calvary's hill. He gave his life to, to a mean world like you and me. He gave up the ghost on a skull hill called Calvary. They nailed him tight in his hand. They ribbed his feet. They raised him high. They dropped him low. Low. Jesus died for you and he died for me. Yes, he did. Out came blood and water. They took him off the cross. They laid him in a barber tomb. It was a barber tomb because it didn't need it too long. Out of that third day morning, he came. He got up with all power. He got up with all power in heaven and earth in his hand. He got up early that third day morning with all power in heaven and earth in his hand. The same Jesus that we talk about, you ought to say his name. You say his name when you're in trouble. Say his name when things are going well for you. Say his name when things are going okay for you. You ought to be willing to say his name because it's that name going to get you out of trouble. It's that name going to keep you out of trouble. It's that name going to see you that you go through to pass these, these mundane shores all the way up in heaven. There may be somebody listening to me today, and they have not realized until this message the power of the name of Jesus. This is your moment. You can get to know him. You can get to know him just like I know him. You can get to know him better than I know him. You just need to call on his name. Trust in the story that they killed him on Calvary. They laid him in a bar or tomb. But out of that third day morning, he rose with all power in heaven and earth from the grave. If you can just believe the story, you can be saved today. You can be born again today. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. You ought to be willing to say his name. His name is Jesus. 
He is the one who makes a difference. His name is Jesus. Jesus of Nazareth. His name is Jesus. You got to trust in him. You got to be willing to follow him. His name is Jesus. The righteous lamb of God. Jesus the Christ. You can trust him today. The door is open. The invitation is extended. If you never trusted Jesus as your Savior, you can do that right now. Believe in your heart. Confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. Believing that he died for your sins. He was buried in a barbed tomb. And early that third day morning, he rose from the dead. The door is open. The invitation is extended. You ought to come to Jesus. You don't need a church building to get to know him. I met him in 1980 in a geometry classroom, Gentry High School, Indianola, Mississippi. There was no birds singing. No birds flew around the room. The sky didn't open up. The earth didn't quake. Dorothy Steele said to me in Miss Bonner's Sixth Spirit class, across the hall from the cafeteria, room number two, Gentry High School, Indianola, Mississippi, Dorothy Steele said to me, you can be saved right here, right now in this room. You don't have to get up and run around the room. You won't have to speak in other tongues. But you must believe the story that Jesus died for your sins and rose from the dead. And if that's you today, then and you are where I used to be. Have not confessed Christ as your Savior. This is a good moment to get to know him. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. You can get to know him right now. You can be a part of this Christian journey. Just bow your head right now and repeat this simple prayer after me. And you will be saved on your way to heaven. Trusting that Jesus died and rose again. Just repeat after me. Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the son of God. I believe that you gave your life for me. I believe that you died on Calvary. I believe that you rose the third day morning with all power. Now come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and thank God. If you prayed that prayer, we believe that you are born again according to Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10. We believe that if you believe the story that Jesus died and rose again, you are saved. We believe according to 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 15, verses 1 through 5, that if you believe in the death, burial, resurrection, and the, the, the appearance of Jesus Christ, that you are saved. We believe according to John chapter 3, verse 16, that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that if you trust in him, believe in him, you are saved. If you join us today and, and receive Jesus Christ as your Savior, please inbox me. And now there may be some of you who are present with us today who don't have a church home who don't have a church home, that everybody needs a church home. Right now, not many churches are meeting, so you can you can join our church online. You, you can just inbox me and let me know that you want to join the New Beginning Church. I recommend the New Beginning Church, where Jesus is the, the main attraction, where Jesus is the one who makes the difference, where Jesus is the captain of the ship, where Jesus is the center of attention. Just let me know that you want to join the New Beginning Church. I'll send you a form to fill out, and you can join the New Beginning Church, and we'll be glad to have you a part of our church. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for keeping us, and thank you for being a part of our service on today. We're going to move right into communion. This is our communion time. This is our time for communion, where we come to acknowledge Jesus Christ, come to acknowledge the fact that Jesus died on Calvary 
over 2,000 years ago that Jesus gave his life for us. Jesus says as often as we do it, we show forth his death and his suffering until he come again. So I'm going to give you a little time to get your, your juice and your crackers. And we're going to commune together today, honoring Jesus the Christ and what he has already done for us on Calvary. Jesus said to his disciples that as often as you do this, you show forth my death and my suffering until I come again. So we want to eat and drink together today and celebrate who Jesus, who Jesus is. We want to celebrate by drinking and eating to celebrate who Jesus is and what he has done for us. He has done some things for us. Yes, he died. He was buried and he rose again just for us. And we want to make sure that we honor him today. Many are walking the streets today to honor George Floyd, to honor those who've been killed senseless by police officers. And these things we must do. But even greater than that, we must honor what Jesus has done. He died on Calvary. And he says to his disciples, after he got them in the upper room, that as often as you do this, he show forth my death and my suffering until we come again, till he comes again. Let's go to God in prayer. Father God, we thank you now. We bless your name. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. We thank you for all that you do. We thank you for Jesus Christ, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit. God the Father, we thank you for being our God. Now, Lord, bless us as we come before the communion table. Bless those who hear us. Bless those who are walking with us. And bless those, Father God, who are your children. Those who believe the story that Jesus died for our sins and rose from the dead. Bless us as we come before the table. Bless the tables all over this world that we would not drink or eat damnation to our souls. Lord, we confess our sins. Lord, we've fallen short. We messed up. We've not done the things that are pleasing in your sight. God, we ask you to bless us now as we partake of your communion. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And thank God. Thank you so much for, for coming to celebrate with us. And we are celebrating Jesus' death, burial, and his resurrection. Please take your bread. The Bible says that Jesus took bread. He broke it. He passed it out to his disciples and said, eat ye all of it. This represent my body. Eat ye all of it. And he took the cup and he said this is the cup of the new covenant or the new testament he says to us as often as we drink of this cup we show forth our appreciation to his death his burial and his resurrection drink ye all of it amen Amen and bless the name of Jesus. We celebrate him for he is worthy to be celebrated. He's worthy of all the honor, all the praise, and all the glory. It is now time for us to transition to our offering time. It is offering time. It is, it is offering time. It is time for us to celebrate God by bringing forth his offering. Amen. It's time for us to celebrate God by bringing forth his offering. You can do so by two means. First of all, you can mail in your offering to P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. You can mail in to your offering. You mail your offerings in to New Beginning Church, P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. 
or you can join us by giving your offering on Cash App. Our cash tag is dollar sign NBC Souls. Cash tag NBC Souls. All right, our cash app again is cash tag NBC Souls, dollar sign NBC Souls. Please, ma'am, please, sir, join us in our offering period here today. Let me take this time to thank those who have been mailing in their offering faithfully and thank those who have been sending their offering in by way of cash app faithfully. Thank you so much for partnering with the New Beginning Church and those of you who are members of the New Beginning Church, thank you for being faithful to giving forth your tithes and your offering. We, are, we realize that we are at a remote location and we are transmitting from a re remote location, but God is faithful. Amen. He is faithful to keep us from falling even during these times. So please, ma'am, please, sir, continue to give your offering. The cash app is cash tag NBC Souls, P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459 is the P.O. Box. Thank you for joining us every Sunday, and you continue to join us every Sunday at 9 a.m. for Sunday School. You can join us in the same broadcast on Facebook Live at 9 a.m. every Sunday for Sunday School. And you can also join us every Sunday at this service at 10.45 a.m. for our worship service. You can continue to join us. And then on Wednesday night, you can join us in our Bible study at 7.20 p.m., 7.20 p.m. on Wednesday nights for our Bible study. We're so glad that you've joined us here today. Please continue to join us. And we look forward to seeing you and being with you and, and that you can continue to be blessed by what we're doing here at the New Beginning Church. Thank you for joining us here today for our service. And we, we thank God for allowing us to have this broadcast that that we can continue to do great things in the world in which we live. Those of you who have joined us for the first time, thank you for visiting with us. Thank you for being a part of this service. We look forward to seeing you live and in color. We look forward to seeing you live and in color as soon as the pandemic and God say is, is all right to do so. Thank you so much and please join us again. Let's go to God in prayer. Father God, we thank you now and we bless your name. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. We thank you for who you are and for what you do. Lord, we ask you to continue to bless us. Continue to walk with us. Continue, Father God, for us to stay focused even in the situations we're in. Bless our lives that our lives will be like Jesus. Bless us to have the mind of Christ. Bless us, Lord, to always humble ourselves before all the things that goes on around us. Bless us, Lord, to call his name, the name of Jesus. In any circumstances, bless us to call on the name of Jesus. Bless us to realize that there's power in his name, that God has given him a name above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee must bow and every tongue must confess. Bless us as we walk, Father God, that we will march we will walk, we will protest peacefully. Bless our nation, bless our world. Bless us with peace. In Jesus' name we pray and we ask it all. Amen and thank God. Again, thank you so much for joining us. We look forward to seeing you on Wednesday night. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer.